The railway line from Koblenz to Pal crosses the River Moselle in the community of Neath where it enters the Petersburg Tunnel. Current regulations for double-track railway lines require a 4-metre minimum distance of the track axes. To meet this requirement, the Petersburg Tunnel needs to be enlarged. Being a very busy track section, closing the line would considerably interfere with rail traffic. Therefore, Marty undertakes the tunnel enlargement while service continues. For the two-year construction period, an installation site and a dedicated site entrance road are built at the southern entrance to the tunnel. Since tourism is an important economic factor along the Moselle River, it is important not to disrupt the operations of the adjacent camping ground. The site accommodates offices, staff rooms and technical facilities, as well as a workshop, a magazine and a stockyard. There is also room for intermediate storage of excavated rock. An earth bank for the installation site is formed. Once it has been asphalted, the installation of the technical facilities begins. During a four-week tunnel closure, the only disruption of the railway services during the construction phase, the double track line is temporarily reduced to a single track. At the same time, Marty erects a 470-metre protection tunnel made from steel and wood to ensure optimal operational safety of staff and rail traffic. Subsequently, the pre-cuts, including rockfall protection and slope reinforcement measures, are carried out to ensure safe railway operation during the construction phase. The next step includes the installation of the so-called tunnel enlargement system at the south portal of the tunnel. It comprises a platform specially developed by Marty Technic, accommodating all installations required for the tunnel driving works, and also provides the working planes for the workers. Following the installation and comprehensive testing, the fully assembled system is positioned by a gigantic crane. The tunnel is driven in a cyclic process. The actual tunnel is excavated by blasting. Hydraulic hammers are used to remove loose rock, and the arch is lined with sprayed concrete. After the excavated material has been removed, a first layer of reinforcement steel meshes is installed and supported by lattice girders. A first layer of sprayed concrete stabilises the arch. The structure is fastened to the rock using rock anchors. A second layer of reinforcement meshes completes the cycle. To prepare the blasting, a drill rig is used to drill blast holes into the rock. The Marty experts carefully position and wire the explosives. Safety is of paramount importance. Following the closing of the track and release through the railway company's safety officer, the explosives engineer triggers the blasting. Following a comprehensive safety assessment of the tunnel, a train passes through the tunnel again every eight minutes and the work continues. Loose rock is removed using the hydraulic hammers. Special vehicles clear away the excavated material to the sides.
the excavated material is temporarily stored on the installation site and removed by truck later. Immediately after the removal of the rock, the tunnel arch is secured with a first sprayed concrete lining. Subsequently, a layer of reinforcement meshes is installed. Lattice girders are installed to support the structure and the rock. Despite the adverse conditions, Marty staff places the lattice girders with centimetre precision. In the next step, the first thick sprayed concrete lining is applied. In the same operation, a second sprayed concrete lining is applied to the area anchored in the previous construction cycle. The drill rigs are used to drill the anchor holes. The anchors are up to 5 metres long and provide secure fastening of the concrete lining to the rock of the Petersburg. Once the tunnel driving operation has reached the northern portal, the tunnel enlargement system returns backwards to the southern portal. On the way back, abutments are constructed at the foot of the arch which will later support the finished inner concrete lining. In parallel, the so-called formwork carriage, a reinforcement carriage, a transport carriage and the ceiling carriages are installed at the installation site. Once work on the abutments is completed and the tunnel enlargement system has returned to the southern portal, the first construction stage of the new inner lining is complete. To prevent disruption of regular rail services, the tunnel enlargement system is replaced by the new ready-assembled formwork carriage components at night time. Now, concreting of the final arch lining can begin. The cycle starts at the northern portal. The transport carriage conveys the partly ready-made reinforcement components to the installation point. There, the arches and meshes are connected to form a load-bearing construction. The installation of the reinforcement steel meshes and arches is done by hand. Working in the tunnel is exhausting. Despite this, the workers are able to install the reinforcements precisely as scheduled. The formwork carriage is positioned and levelled within centimetre range precision. The hydraulic formwork elements are precisely positioned and sealed against the tunnel arch. The construction has to be very flexible and yet extremely strong. The formwork must later be able to withstand the enormous pressure of the liquid concrete. Now the concrete can be applied. It is important that the concrete is applied symmetrically on both sides in order to prevent the formwork from slipping under the high pressure applied. Inspection doors allow to monitor distribution of the concrete during application. 
the sealing carriages prevent any rapid thermal or moisture loss to allow for optimal setting of the concrete and to eliminate the formation of cracks. Along with the application of the inner concrete lining, the northern portal is completed within a very confined space using the cut and cover method. Once the formwork carriage has reached the southern portal, thus completing the inner lining, the southern portal is constructed also using the cut and cover method. With this step, the actual tunnel enlargement is complete. In a final step, the internal protective tunnel and the installation area are removed. Now the railway line from Koblenz to Pearl is ready to resume double track operation.